advanced reading so that you could participate in our recitation. So for our recitation, um, later, we'll start. Okay, let's begin. So I'll be sharing my screen first. Okay, so the first question is, as a student, when do you feel that a class is a learner-centered class? For our first recitation, my question is, as a student, when do you feel that a class is a learner-centered class? Okay, so I'll be stopping my screen and then I will listen for your um, recitation. Anyone, you could raise your hands. Okay. So anyone, when do you feel that a class is a learner-centered class? You can use a chat box or raise your hands. Okay, so I haven't have any responses yet. Anyone from your group, when do you feel that a class is a learner-centered class? So I want I want to know your your understanding because knowing what a learner-centered class is for your opinion is very important for me because that is actually our lesson. Um, this is actually the subject. So, Miss uh, Ted students again. What is a learner-centered class? Yes, Miss Riza. Riza Mendiola. What is a learner-centered Yes, Ma'am Riza. You can be heard. Para po sa akin yung learner-centered class po, ano. Kunwari po sa amin, bitibitid po, nakahilera na po yung isang, yung mga tools and equipment po, tapos, Igi-guess po namin yung kung anong pangalan po nun. Yun okay, po. very good. Thank you, Ms. Risa. That is actually one of the best example for uh, one of the best examples of learner-centered class that could be applied to your um, to your courses. So, ang pag-uusapan natin is PTPT. So, tama, Ms. Um, Risa Mendiola. One of the things that you could do in a learner-centered class is instead of saying na, oh, ito, anto, uh, itong equipment na to, uh, pamprito, <laughs> sorry, um, ito, ganito, ganito. But, it's a good thing, Miss Riza, nakahilera na, according to you, yung mga items, and then, you will just guess, okay? And actually, it's not just guess, maybe some of you are already bakers, or if it is a cooking tool, okay, um, or machine, na pwede ang, ang bata yung magtuturo sa klase. That's good. How about the others? Aside from Ms. Riza Mendiola. Bells, what is a learner-centered class? When do you feel? I'm not asking for um, a, a definite definition of a learner-centered class. What I'm asking is your definition of learner-centered class. When do you feel? Retivited. Okay, actually sa inyo, ta, um, sa inyo ang pinakamadaming learner-centered class eh. Yes, Miss Marilu Mateo, how about you? Ay, hello po ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ma'am, para po sa akin yung learner center, center po ay yung pagtuturo po sa amin ng ano po, Ang pagtuturo niyo po sa amin ng strategies, uh, yung learner, distinguishing, yung pagiging creativity po namin, tapos yung kailangan po lagi kami mag-iisip kung paano namin may apply sa mga bata yung ituturo po namin. Very good. Exactly. Yun yung mga tinuturo ng mga teachers niyo sa inyo ngayon na 
um, the strategies. Number one pa lang sa sinabi ni Ms. Marilu, tamang-tama na yun. It's the strategies. Kasi sa teacher-centered, what you need to do is just teach. You just need to have a lecture. Pero, kagaya na sabi ni Ms. Marilu, in a learner-centered class, pinibigyan kayo ng different strategies, pinag-iisip kayo ng different strategies so that um, you could understand, uh, you could help the students uh, be more creative. Okay, mas mag-participate sila. Very good, Miss Marilou. Your answer is correct. Last one. Sige na. Naway ito namang klase natin ay hindi masayang. Kailangan nagsasalita kayo. Sayang ang internet connection na meron kayo kung meron man. If you will not speak, even sa chat box, everything is recorded by our class manager. So please do recite. Thank you, Miss Marilou and Riza. How about the others? Anyone? Nana? Okay. So, medyo hindi kayo, uh, my dear students, this is a prof ed subject and our lesson is about you most of the time. Dapat sana nag-share kayo para malaman ko if you understand. Um, Jenshin, okay. Mahina daw yung signal. Kasi, if you will recite, tandaan nyo ang online class, hindi siya effective kapag nakaupo ka lang. Hindi ka nagpa-participate. Tandaan nyo yan. Kasi nakakatamad. Gagawa kayo ng mga activities. Uh, kunwari, naglalaba. Yung mga ganun. Hindi papasok yung learning dyan. Madadagdagan ang trabaho po ninyo. Kasi mag, uh, pag sinabi nyo, panonoorin ko na lang yan. Or mamodulin ko na lang yan. Kapag pwede kayo nagre-recite, pero kaya nyo namang mag-recite. Dadagdagan lang yung workloads ninyo. Habang nag-aaral kayo, nag-aaral mga ganun. Imbis na ngayong oras na to, nakafocus kayo sa gawain. Kung kaya din naman at wala kayong uh, ibang gawain, okay? wala kayong ibang responsibilidad, I think this is better if you recite. Because wala po akong gagamitan ng online activities. Kundi quizzes lang, tsaka ito. So now, for our next question. Okay, sa chat box na lang natin sagutin. Okay, which do you prefer? A teacher who is the sole discussant or lecturer or a teacher who gives you enrichment activities? Just chat box na lang. You just choose one. A sole le lecturer, as in mag-lecture lang si teacher, or a teacher who will give you some activities? Which do you prefer? Just answer the chat box. Anyone needs to answer? Then, a lecturer or a teacher who gives enrichment activities. Which do you prefer? As Susena said, I prefer both. Okay. You mag give po na activities, sabi ni Mary Cassandra. Okay. What else? How about the others? Maritoni, the teacher who will give enrichment activities. Okay. Thank you. That's nice. Okay, how about the others? Do I only have content? Magigive na activities, sabi ni Evelyn Bernal. Okay. What else? Me too, ma'am. Both. Okay, thank you, RJ. How about the others? Leo Mari, uh, a teacher who gives uh, you enrichment activities. Okay, so just continue answering. Uh, some of you will say, Ma'am, uh, if you prefer uh, lecture type, and sometimes, ibig sabihin niyan, kapag halo ang sagot nyo, both will say, or may ibang individual, ay may ibang um, teacher, may ibang, ang ibig sabihin kasi talaga niyan, no size fits all. Wala talagang isang bagay na pwede, na puro yun lang. Kasi pag puro activity, sometimes some lessons are very hard, and pag naman puro lecture, um, sometimes, apaka-boring naman, hindi gumagalaw yung bata, tinatamad yung bata. Okay? So, those are the different things. Now, which do you prefer naman? Group task or individual task? If your teacher will say, okay, group task tayo, uh, let's have a task. So, ano gusto nyo? Individual or group task? Individual? Okay, Mary Cassandra said, group task po, ma'am. Mitzi said, 
group tas Julian okay si Lomari Juvel RJ Kaira puro group tas okay as I said, I said individual tas okay and Mary Lou said individual tas so we could say that the reason why some of you do not like in uh, group tas is because maybe some of your group mates are not that good so mahirap nga naman yun, ano okay so wait lang okay so some of you they prefer group because of the collaboration and when it comes to the learner centered class group task is actually the norm yan yung pinaka importante kasi uh, we want the students col to collaborate so group task is more in the uh, learner centered okay now let's have i hope that you review for your um quiz uh, quiz today for your um, recitation so first to answer through chat, we'll receive three points. First five will receive two points each. I hope you're ready. So you just need to read the questions fast and answer it immediately in the chat box. Okay, so the chat box tayo. First to answer. Okay, so for our class manager, yung unang, yung unang makasagot ng tama will receive three points. Tapos yung sumunod na lima, they will receive five point, ay, two points if correct ang answer nila. Okay, so all in all, six people ang ating tatawagin. Okay, so let us begin. Uh, we will, uh, most of the questions are from the educational philosophies. Nasa lesson two siya na ating lesson one, ay, na ating unit one. Okay, so let us begin. The first question, unit one, uh, for unit one is this one. Number one, this philosophy aims to be a closely organized and well-disciplined environment which develops in students' lifelong quest for truth. So, don't forget, lifelong quest for truth. Wag kayo mali nito. What educational philosophy is this? What educational philosophy aims to be a closely Organized and well-disciplined environment. Anyone? May nagbasa kaya ng module? Kahit uh, 10 minutes before the class? One minute ago. <laughs> okay. Wala talaga. Okay, so if none, okay, let's proceed. The correct answer is perennialism. So perennialism is the philosophy that aims to be a closely organized and well-disciplined environment which develops in students' lifelong quest for truth. So perennialism ang sagot. Now, let us move on with our next question. Question number two. Philosophy that believes that learner that learning is rooted in the questions learners are, uh, of learners that arise from experiencing the world. So, what uh, philosophy is that? Anyone from the group? Okay. Okay, so I guess um, with your section, this is the last section that I'll be handling. And I guess for this section, um, you really don't want to answer. Okay, so no problem naman kung you don't want to answer. And you don't want to have your recitations with you. It's fine. That's, um, that's your, you did, you did not do your assignment to read. You have a week. So, walang problema sa akin yun. So let us just proceed with our lesson na lang. Okay, so we'll do more of the lecture type. Okay, more on, um, now the problem is that how will I give you grades? 
Okay, so pag-iisipan ko. Um, sige, ganito na lang. Kung ayaw niyo mag-recite, sige. I will talk to the class muna. You're not reciting, it means that you are not uh, interested. So no worries. Tanong ko na lang. Okay. Class manager and class monitor, kindly open your cameras and mic. It's from him. Okay. It seems like your classmates um, are not... Uh, this is the second question and wala talagang nag to try to answer. So it's fine by me. But paano yan? Wala akong uh, ire-record. Kasi kakaunti lang yung nagsasagot. What should I do? Should I give you quizzes? Global quiz na lang tayo lagi. So instead of 20 item quiz, we will have 40 items. Is that okay? Um, siguro po, ano. Um, so since first time po namin to, uh, siguro po sa second meeting, May kakulungan po siguro talaga kami, hindi kami nag-review kasi kaya hindi po kami makasagot. Pero ma'am, nakikipag-participate po sila. Baka hindi okay. lang po talaga nag-open. Okay, sige. Ah, ganito na lang. Um, okay, sige. I do agree with you. Maybe na uh, hindi lang nakapagbasa. But, kaya ang gaya na sabi sa inyo, I will not give you any activity. O oh, sige. So let's just try. Maybe we'll finish this one um, after the discussion. Siguro. So next time, Miss Maritoni, we will participate. Is that what you're saying? Yes po, ma'am. Yes po. Okay, sige. No worries. Pwede naman. Okay, I would just like to ask. Yes, Miss Angelica Litao, you raise your hand. Do you have any question, Miss Litao? Wala po, ma'am. Napindot lang po. Sorry po. Okay, it's no problem. I guess we'll just proceed with the mismong lesson. Okay. Lesson na lang tayo diretso. So we will not have problems. So we shall begin with lesson one of our discussion. So unit one, lesson one, is a learner center teaching. So next week, we will be having your quiz. We'll have three lessons for that in, in, in one unit. Diba yung nasabi ko sa inyo? We will have uni, um, unit test. Kasi ang bala ko, baka sabi mo, ang dami mo namang pinagagawa. Ang hirap. Okay, so it's fine. But, um, my, this is my claim kasi, kaya ang, ang bala ko is um, lecture, quiz, lecture, quiz. Bala ko kasi, we only have five lecture meetings. Tapos, yung other five would be your quiz meetings. Parang ganun. I will open the quiz for 24 hours. And, so, yun. So, ganun yung gagawin. Yun. So, so, five lecture, five lecture. Kasi um, ayokong pustuhin ng mabagal. Hindi ako mabagal kasi dahil baka mamaya um, magkaroon ng, like, for example, meron tayong yung mga academic freeze, mga ganong bagay, mga academic something-something, or bumagyo, bumaha, and whatsoever. Magkaroon ng internet connection problem na malawakan. Mga ganong bagay. So, Iko-concise na natin every meeting. Kaya yung every five, um, yung five meetings natin na lecture would be dedicated for your um, lecture talaga. As in, lecture and recitation tayo. Kasi kagaya nga na inuulit-ulit ko sa inyo, eh, pinag-uusapan namin ni Maritone kanina, I don't give, ano na, I don't give online activities. Ang sa akin lang is you just participate. You share your opinions and recitations na recorded naman ni Miss Maritoni. And also, your attendance na recorded naman ni Miss Kyra. Kyra, ni, ni Miss Kyra. Um, na yun lang ang, in, ano ko, is pumasok kayo ng magpa-participate. So, since um, at this first, siguro medyo fail tayo sa first uh, meeting, but it's fine, okay? So, as a teacher, we need to adapt. Dapat ano-ano tayo. Um, if it's not working, then change. Okay? So, yun. Wala yung problema sa akin. Uh, so, let's begin our discussion. So, lesson one is the learner-centered teaching. So, we shall begin with the learner-centered teaching. Um, the learner-centered teaching, as a teacher, given the context of my students' course and classroom, 
will this teaching action optimize my students' opportunity to learn? Ito yung question natin lagi as a teacher. When we are uh, when we aim for a learner-centered teaching, dapat we will, we should ask for um, the students' interest. Kasi nga, learner-centered na tayo. We, we need to know the learner's interest, the opportunity that you could give the students. Like, for example, uh, saan ba sila mas... Um, saan ba yung estudyante mas, makaka, mas makakapag-participate? What activities do you think the students want? Okay, so those are the different things that we need con to consider in a learner in a learner center teaching. All right, sorry. Okay, so those are the different questions that we need to consider. Like for example, if the if the stud if the students are should I say oh like for example ngayon um you are benefited students therefore maybe your interest is more on about your courses so i should have um, at least research some examples some opportunities in which you could participate and you could um share your experiences or another thing um one of the things that i do for my students is that i for example i ask them oh ano yung mga trendy ano yung mga gusto nyo um sinasabi nila yung hobbies nila and like sila like the K-pop, so you could use um kung like BTS, you could use BTS for your lessons so that the students could be more inspired. So next time, the man anime, okay? So you will have theme PowerPoint presentations, mga ganon. So those are the different things that you could do to optimize your students' opportunity to learn. And aside from that, you should know their talents as well. So as a teacher, we could um. We could give them some activities in which that they could use their talents and skills. Like for example, and benefited students, malamang sa magiging TLE teacher kayo, and especially sa private schools, malamang yun ang maging focus nyo is to have to be a TLE teacher. So ano yung mga pwede yung gawin? Like for example, some of my friends na sa TLE under siya ng foods, nagkakaroon siya ng mga food festival in which the students could uh, prepare for catering services. Yung mga ganong bagay na um, na naka, na may mga estudyante na nagde-design ng tables na depende sa theme nila na sila din yung umisip, sila din yung nagluto ng pagkain, sila yung bumili, sila yung talaga nag-conceptualize. And my dear students, um, even they're just a high school student, may mga estudyante talaga na yung table, akala mo isang sikat na stylist ang nag-ayos. Nag, nag hindi siya mukhang pichugi lamang, it's siya sobrang ganda. So, why? Why? Why do these things happen? Because we give opportunity for their students to learn. And a while ago, you uh, um, you told me one of the things that you think uh, it's learner-centered is um, the students could, what you call this, could, uh, instead of saying, oh, this is the, nasa table lahat ng mga equipments and some materials, and the students will share kung ano yung alam nila doon, what it is. Um, those are some talents. Eh. May mga tao kasi, may mga bata na they are gifted or they have an interest in cooking or do, using utilization of these materials which nabibigyan nyo sila ng chances. Okay? So those are the different things that you should know as a teacher. Um, it's very different from the teacher-centered approach. Why? Because it has a new learning roles. Before, um, teacher -centered, uh, in the teacher-centered approach, um, in a teacher-centered approach, ang role natin is we are the sole discussion. Honestly, ayoko nang ganun. Ayoko nang mag-discuss ng sobrang haba kasi I know that the students will not participate. Naantok. Okay. So, I always use this kind of games during and after. May mga ganun. Yun. And with this one, students have control. Real control with their education. Which is not evident for for teacher-centered. Kasi sa teacher-centered, control ni teacher lahat. And Collaboration is a regular thing in a learner-centered environment because in a uh, in a in a teacher-centered environment, more on individual tasks. Now, some of you, uh, maybe some of you, na abutan yung curriculum during the uh, more more on teacher-centered sila. Uh, before ang ginagawa natin is uh, mag uh, every discussion, magdi-discuss si teacher, 
magpapa-activity si teacher on your own sa notebook and then magpapa-quiz si teacher kinabukasan or pag natapos na yung lesson and then um after doon, puro ganon, uh, quiz, activity, quiz, activity, quiz, activity, quiz. So, napupuno yung notebook mo, kakasulat, na yung mga papel mo, nauubos, kaka for the quizzes. And then you will have a project, individual. And then you will have a final examination for that grading period. So, periodical examination, rather. So, for that, um, doon natatapos eh. But now it's different. Napaka napakaiba na education ngayon. Like for example, papasok si student, they will have a games, um they will have role playing. Marami eh. They, they they have lots of activities na ginagawa in which nakakapagod and some of the parents magtataka sila nung araw hindi naman ganyan. Nung araw ganito, dati madaling maging honor. Kasi sariling follow mo lang ngayon, may mga iba na lalaglag kasi ngayon mga kagrupo nila hindi tumutulo. So, the collaboration for learner-centered is always um, there. Aspects of learner-centered practice, one, involving students in first-hand learning, giving students choices about and control of their learning, and teaching students lifelong learning skills and promoting the relevance of learner-centered teaching. So, that's, a, that, that's one of, uh, that's the four aspects of the learner-centered practice. So, as you can see, if you will analyze these words, nakafocus talaga sila about how the students could control their education and independent learning. So, yun, medyo mahirap siya. And my dear students, do not be confused. Baka sabihin nyo, ah, okay, magpapareport ako, importante pala yun. Okay, iba po yun. This is just one part of it, but that doesn't mean you need to ask your students to report. Puro report, report. We also do need to do our job as a teachers to guide them. And sometimes reporting is actually very hard. Mahirap siya eh, kasi pag, pag nagpa-report ka, minsan ang, ah, hindi nakikinig yung bata dun sa reporter, not because, because inaalala nila yung mismo nilang report. So, yun ang problem. And sometimes, some um, activities ay medyo mahirap siya. Too much. Um, one of the quotes that is very popular when it comes to learner-centered teaching is give a man a fish and you feed him for a day and teach a man how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Some people, they say this is a Chinese proverb. Some, this is um, unknown, anonymous. Okay. But regardless of the author of this one, we believe with this quote that you should give a man, instead of giving man a fish for a day, you need to give, you need to teach them how to fish. We need to teach the students to learn independently because we believe that in a teacher center and in a learner centered environment, we believe that teachers, uh, that the students should know how to um, study. Yun ang tinuturo natin sa mga bata, kaya more on collaboration. Now, some of you will say, uh, siguro yung mga hindi pa nakaranas mag-work, um, pag hindi marunong mag-collaborate ang isang tao sa isang work, uh, which is the real application na sana, di ba, na ating uh, ng lahat-lahat. So, pag hindi marunong ang isang tao na mag-collaborate, ano mangyari? What will happen is that makakainisan siya sa trabaho. It's, just, it's either magiging pabibo siya or maybe um, or maybe makakainisan siya kasi tamad siya. So, the problem with collaboration, kasi sa isang klase, isang beses mo lang siya magiging ka-group or not all the time. But when it comes to the work, lalo kung wala kang balak, pare, wala kayong balak pareho mag-resign, you need to deal with that person. And sometimes it really helps. The grouping, makakatulong. Now, some of you are very familiar with this one. Actually, um, I'm sorry for not adding uh, the current likes of the kids, but during my time kasi, I love Blue's Clues. I do know Sesame Street, but I don't watch it. It's for me, it's too much. And Dora the Explorer and Coco Melon. For, for this now. Um, this is very popular to the kids. And you will say, ah, bakit kaya popular tong mga to sa kids? Ah, kasi makulay. Some of you will say. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's not because of makulay. But rather, it's about... Um, the students are given, or the critical thinking of students are tingled with this one. Like, for example, 
di ba si Dora ang all I'm sorry ah, kasi I really love Dora the Explorer because um my cousin like that and na nasa amin siya na, na paborito niya yun pero ang favorite ko before si Blues Blues now Dora will ask the kid where do we ask for help when we don't know which way to go so now this the kid will answer the map okay the map right parang ang inaano niya is that the students have the ability to think and there's always a feedback. Hindi naman sinabi ni Dora, we ask the map for help. Hindi ganun eh. But rather, she asks the kid. And sometimes, it is very important for us to ask the, our students what do they want. And instead of um, saying, uh, sa Dora the Explorer, instead of um, saying, we will go here. Uh, for example, meron silang mga, um, they ask the watcher, they asked the kids sa uh, kanilang TV show is, um, paano kaya kung gagawin nila? To, like, for example, uh, ano yung best way so that they could solve this problem? Um, the students could think, ano ba yung pwede? So, na- nag-iisip si student. Nag-iisip yun. So, that is actually a learner-centered. Kahit sabihin yung TV show si Dora, learner-centered siya because it gives the students, one, interest, and number two, ability to think. Okay, nakakapag-isip siya, which is very important. Also in Blue's Clues, this one. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Blue's Clues, but during my time, I, uh, Blue's Clues has always three clues. So something will happen, and since he's a dog, he cannot say directly what he wants. Instead, he leaves different clues. And at the end of the, and at the, end of the, the show, you will know that he is uh, what he wants. Now, for Blue's Clues, he, uh, he, the student, the kids usually, they, they connect, connect, connect what he wants. Kino connect, connect niya, iniisip niya, like throughout the show, aside from helping Mrs. Pop or opening the mail, instead of, aside from those things, uh, one of the things that you do is the kids will think, ano ba yung gagawin? Uh, what is this? Pag pinag-combine mo yung three clues, ano ibig sabihin nun? And Steve will also draw something. So that is very important for the kids. Sometimes we, the kids just want to know why they want, um, why they need to learn. Okay, yun. Okay, so actually, uh, we will have this, kaya lang, since you didn't review, yung last question na lang. So let us have the second unit, the paradigm shift from teacher center to the learner center teaching. After this, we will have um, of the question and answer. So dito wala na tayo. Hi, bisa bihinon. After nito, we'll have um, the, those game again. So maybe mi masasagot na kayo. So let's begin with lesson two, the paradigm shift from teacher centered from learner centered teaching. We have two teacher-centered philosophies that we will discuss today. So we will begin first with the essentialism. Essentialism came from the Plato's idealism that all things have such an essence of form. So there are some things that has different categories, like for example, the men, the women, racial groups. So nakakategorize lahat ng bagay. And in essentialism class, the classrooms are teacher-centered oriented. So most of the time, teachers will do some lectures, and it is believed that teachers are very relatively conservative. And ito yung makikita natin na sobrang uh, the virtue of the teacher, ayan, sobrang kagalang-galang, ganon, kasi bawal magkamali si teacher. So the standards of being a teacher, aside from the academic standards, kailangan uh, morally ano din si teacher. So, fundamental arts are very important in essentialism because it is very essential. Okay. The reading, writing, arithmetic, and right conduct. So, one of the representations that I usually have when it comes to um, essentialism is that it's for Snape. Snape, Snape, Severus Snape. Why? Because this is Snape. I, mean, I don't know if you're familiar with Harry Potter. You know, uh, he is very strict. But he doesn't mean that he did is not teaching. He is actually teaching very well, but he's very strict and he is very teacher oriented. Um, compared to uh, when Lupin become the teacher, so more about the teacher's interest and uh, what, what else? Also those kind of people. So 
Snape is very essentialist. Uh, McGonagall is also essentialist teacher. So very strict. So they believe in the, these things. So the core curriculum is surrounding environment. When we say core curriculum, um, this is the basic. Ayan yan. Hindi yan mawawala sa atin. Like for example, um, we have under the core curriculum subjects sa uh, ating um, curriculum in CHED, yung sa inyo bitivited, lahat ng EDOC students meron silang core curriculum. Na lahat yun meron kayo. Okay? So, kaya ito, I think this is part of the core curriculum, the philosophy, uh, the facilitating and student learning. That's why bitivited, biped, said English, Filipino, Math, Science, and Social Studies have this one. So essentialism, um, it is the, uh, sur the core curriculum is surrounding environment, basic natural laws, discipline to promote happier and more educated living. So this instills the student's essential of academic knowledge. And teachers, at my dear students, ha, a, a while ago I asked, uh, I, I, I didn't, um, you didn't pension, but um, some, some, they believe that Teachers are not uh, the, the guide, but rather they are there to transmit and reshape, not, uh, not to transmit and not, not to reshape the society, but transmit the traditional moral values and intellectual knowledge that students need to become a model citizen. So as a, as a, as a teacher, hindi mo role ang essentialist, hindi mo role para baguhin ang isang bata, but rather yung alam mo, na tama, is yun ay tuturo mo sa mga bata. So, yun yun. That's why it is teacher-centered. Because you don't believe in the student's interest. But rather, you believe that they should know this para maging model citizen sila. So, that is essentialism. Aside from that, the curriculum has math, natural sciences, history, foreign language, and literature. And they frown upon vocational courses or other courses that water down academic interest. So, in essentialism, siguro walang bitivitin. Because they, um, in an essentialist class, they want the those things, the math, natural sciences, history. But nowadays, hindi eh. Kasi ang daming applications ng tech book, tech book case, uh, courses. It's it's not like that anymore. Sometimes nga, um, mas ano siya, mas ano talaga sa bata yung mga ganito. And mas applica applicable siya sa mga bata. So, it's really changing nowadays. So they have little emphasis to the students' interests. And the teachers have a mastery of subject matter, intellectual, and moral models of students. They are the paragon of virtue. When we say paragon, they are the highest form of virtue. So kailangan pag essentialist teacher ka, as in lahat ng bawal, apakadami. And you will not do the bawal thing. Okay, so yun na essentialism. Um, it also, uh, an essentialist teacher is rigid and di disciplinary because they believe in order that effective teaching cannot occur in a loud and disorganized environment. Bawal yung maingay, ayo nila yan. And hindi naman nakakapagdaka kasi teacher lang naman ang nagle-lecture. So pag maingay, it's not good. So teachers must be educationally qualified. Well, I guess um, that's true for everything. Values respect for authority. So those are the different values that they need in essentialist class. Respect for authority, perseverance, fidelity to duty, consideration for others, practicality, and intellectual knowledge that students will need to become model citizens. So when we discuss essentialism, alaging yung tatundaan, especially when you have let examination, is that um, the essentialist once again, um, Aside from region disciplinary, kasi ganun din naman si perennialism, but rather, um, they love the four, uh, the basic fundamental skills, the reading, writing, arithmetic, and aside from that, um, more on about how to become a model citizen. So, medyo mabigat siya talaga. And the proponent is William Bagley. So, let's now discuss the perennialism. Um, in perennialism, ito pinagkaiba ng dalawa. Teacher student, uh, teach students to reason and develop minds that can think critically. Again, kung kanina, they will give the four basic information. In perennialism, they will teach the students to think critically. And although they, are, they have the same organized 
order and quiet classroom, most um, the perennialists believe that the classroom must be cozy organized, a well-disciplined environment which develops students' lifelong quest of truth. Yan ay more on about philosophy, pag perennialism. Kasi um, they will be studying um, teachers. They will be studying teachers from uh, uh, philosophers like um, Aristotle, yung mga ganon, Plato, yun. They focus on everlasting ideas and universal truths. So they do not like um, things that will not be true tomorrow. Okay, so ayaw nila yun. And suggest that education's focus should be the ideas that have lasted for centuries, believing that ideas are as relevant and meaningful today as when they were written. So, pag isipin mo um, per, uh, ideas that lasted for centuries and um, the teaching methodologies yon, uh, we could say na ito ang perennialism na niwala sila sa mga bagay na subuk na okay. And because they want to uh, develop how to become a critical thinker, they the students learn from reading and analyzing works by history's finest thinkers and writers. So ibig sabihin nun, the students will under, uh, study them more on literature, more on reading, and they will not naman ka, copy, but rather more on um, more on mag-iisip. <laughs> more mag sila. Yun ang ano ng perennialism. And they teach students to reason and develop minds, and they epitomize a prepared effort to make the ideas available to students and guide their thought process towards understanding. So they, uh, they will appreciate great works, works of literature written by history's finest thinkers that transcend time and never become outdated. In the research, we always have, uh, laging sinasabi, laging sinasabi, di ba, na uh, your resources must be five years lang from here. So, for example, 2021, back lang ng five years. So, the rest kasi hindi na siya updated. Pag <laughs> now, in perennialism, but except, sorry, sorry, except for the philosophies, hindi siya nawawala. Mula nung siya yung nalimbag, back, uh, centuries back, until now, it's still true. So, sa perennialism, those are the important things. Yung mga concept na ginagamit for that matter. And mastery of the content and development of reasoning skills is very important for them. And they... Perennialist classes are also centered uh, to accomplish these goals. So, they also believe that reading, writing, speaking, and listening are emphasized in the early grades to prepare the students in the later study of literature, history, and philosophy. So, they, know, they are learning how to read, write, and speak, and listen so that as they grow older, they will, they will learn about literature, history, and philosophy. Hi. Okay, so wag kayong magulo, uh, magulo, kayong ma, uh, don't be confused with essentialism and perennialism. So curriculum is universal and is based on their view that all human beings possess the same essential nature. Baka malito kayo po ay, essential. Ibig sabihin, this is essentialism. No. Um, in essentialist, uh, in perennialism, rather, they believe that all human beings are the same. Tao yan. Ganun. Ganun siya. Tao yan eh. Pare-pareho yan. Ganun sa kategory ng tao pareho. But, it's not. Each individual, each human beings are very unique. They have their own talents, they have their own skills, but in perennialism view, it's not. Pare-parehong tao yan. So, pare-pareho sila dapat na inaaral. Pareho, tao tayo nung nakaraan. Ah, tao tayo nakaraan. Ibig sabihin, um, people, uh, it's, it was studied by people back then. So, until now, it's it's true. Okay, so, yun yun. So, um, okay, so, I think, yun lang. Um, class about religion or history. So, the instructor will use religious books and historical documents. And the proponent, the proponent is Robert Hutchins. Now, let's discuss the different student-centered philosophies. So, well, let us have the progressivist here. Progressivism is an educational movement that gives more value to experience than formal learning. Um, experiential learning concentrates on the development of child's talents. And progressivists believe that education should focus on the whole child, 
than on the content or the teacher. So we will study about the experience of a child. You know, progressivism. So more on hindi sila about the formal learning, but rather they want to shape the student's talents and skills. Kaya nakafocus na tayo sa student, which is very different from the teacher centered a while ago because they are more on yung ideas ipapasok mo sa bata. But rather, sa progressivism or sa uh, kukultivate mo yung mga ideas na meron na sila. So learning is rooted in a question of learners that arise through experiencing the world. So so it means that they will they will be needing more and more experiences. They believe that individuality progress uh, and change are fundamental to one's education. They also believe that lear, uh, people learn best when they consider most relevant to their lives. Progressively center their curricula of students' needs, experience, interests, and abilities. And it, the proponent is John Dewey. Now, for pro progressivism, um, <clears throat> sabi di bitad kasi very, ano eh, lahat na matutunan niya dyan. It's actually very practical, I guess. Yes, okay. But as that's, uh, as a teacher, laging tatandaan, pag progressivist ka, instead of just teaching the students, oh, ganito yan, teach them why they need to do that. So yun importante sa estudyante is that they will know why they need to do such things. How can they apply that in the real world? Hindi pwede yung ma-apply nyo naman yan pag nagtrabaho na kayo eh. Hindi ganun. It's not like that. But um, look for something in which they could really apply it as much as possible right now. Okay? So saan nila makikita? Okay? So that they could associate the things that they learn from school sa kanilang practical lives. So yun yun. Okay, so the new progressivist teaching methods are based on, on the philosophy of John Dewey that education is life itself. To some people, sinasabi nila, education is the preparation of life. But for John Dewey, it's not. Education is life itself. Growth, reconstruction of human experience, and the social process. So that is education for them. The main goal of the new Method is personality development through proper stimulation, direction, and guidance. Actually, dito humirap na yung buhay ng teacher kasi dati magtuturo ka lang. As in, ayan na, turo mo lang lesson mo. But this one, hindi. Kasi nakita nila, the teachers have a big role in education. So, medyo humirap. Guidance and counseling of the students go hand in hand with the regular methods Guidance and counseling of students go hand in hand with the regular methods and te teaching techniques. So the new methods place more emphasis on thinking and less upon memorizing. Hindi na sila nagpapa memorize. Unlike sa sa unlike sa other sa teacher center nagpapa memorize sila. Kasi bakit? Pili sa naman sila. Kasi the reason why they keep on ask, uh, telling the students to memorize this, memorize this, so that ma-apply nila yung mga natutunan nung, uh, kumbaga yung, the reason why you memorize things, kasi, so that what they have learned, mapasa siya. Pass, 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 pass. Ngayon, nakita nila that it's, it's different nowadays na. It's not like before. So, what they want to do right now is they want to, you to understand. So, makapansin nyo da, um, ang mga, ano nyo, nadidinig, uh, yung mga lessons is about applications talaga. So, that is progressive. Kasi nag-iiba na. My dear students, um, most of the lessons from modules, not just here in PSU, but also in DepEd, are actually teacher-centered, uh, student-centered na siya. More on activities, group work, um, collaboration, puro ganun na siya. Kasi they believe that a, a person should be, uh, should experience this differently. Okay? Progressive in education have programs that has these qualities. Number one, emphasis on learning by doing hands-on projects, expeditionary learning, experiential learning. As for you, since bitibitan kayo, madali yung hands-on learning. And Kahit medyo magastos ang pag-cooking, something like that. 
alam ko foods kayo eh, as far as I remember during our orientation. But sa Bitivitin, more uh, talagang hands-on. So, wala na kayong problem dito because you really need to do this one. And uh, expeditionary learning, experiential learning. And, and besides, for example, you ask the students to cook. Okay, magluluto tayo ng uh, usually in sa processed foods. So how to <coughs> how to make processed foods. Okay, yung iba yung garnishing, may mga ganun-ganon. So, to some people, instead na sabihin, oh, ganito, ganito, mag-cut, ganito, mag let the students do it. Diba? Ganun ang ginagawa natin. E kaya lang may mga iba, may mga ibang school or parent, nako, baka yung alak ko, mahiwan ang kutsil. <laughs> may mga ganun. But, may, medyo less and less naman yung mga overprotective parents na ayaw nilang maano ang kanilang anak. So, integrated curriculum, focus on thematic units, integration of entrepreneurship into education. Ayan, pwede pwede kayo dyan. Kasi pwede silang taruan paano magbenta ng mga niluto nila. Mga ganun. Strong emphasis on problem solving and critical thinking, group work and development of social skills, understanding um, and action as the goods of learning as opposed to the root knowledge, and of course, the collaborative and cooperative learning projects. Education for social responsibility and democracy, um, highly personalized learning accounting for each individual's personal goals is also part of the curriculum. Uh, integration of community service and service learning uh, projects into a daily curriculum. Selection of subject content by looking forward to asking what skills will be needed in the future society. The emphasis on textbooks in favor of varied learning sources. Emphasis on lifelong learning and social skills. And of course, assessment by evaluation of child's projects and productions. So those are um, the common. Now, let us have humanism. And malapit-lapit na tayo sa katotohanan. Humanism believe that education that's good for a person is also best for the nation's well-being. So, according to the humanist approach, pag ang each individual will have a satisfactory education, they will have, um, it will, the, 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 the nation will benefit for that. Baga madaming makikinabang. Kasi nga, each individual is already okay. Now, um, the individual learner is not regarded as passive or at least easily managed recipient of input. He or she is a choosing, a self-choosing and self-selecting organism. It focuses on human beings being free to act and control their destinies. Now, my dear students, some of you, um, as a teacher, as a teacher kayo, each individual ngayon, uh, I have observed that some of my students and friends, teachers, colleagues, I and kamag-ana, they are having a war, political war. Marami nagagalit, bakit daw? Yung isang um, kaibigan nila, eh, siya edukado pa daw, ibuboto si Kwan. I will not mention names. And then, isa naman, nagagalit, edukado pa daw, bakit naman buboto si ito? Yeah. So, nakakatuwa because they're fighting over the political position of their bets. But isn't it, um, the sources are also, labasan na siya ng counterfacts. So may facts tong isa, may facts tong kabila. Kasi every story has different sides. Now, each individual, it's hard for them to accept that, hello, lahat po yan is based on the decision and thinking na isang tao. You cannot um, force your political beliefs to a person. Like, for example, sabihin mo, iboto mo si ganito. Kasi, ito, ayan, 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 ayan. Kasi isa naman, ito, ayan, ayan, ayan. Sabi niya, ganyan, ganyan. But even if mag magpawas ka, even if you have 100 resources, credible resources, a person will not change his mind. Kasi alam niyo, if a person will change his mind, di sana doon sa religion, pare-pareho tayo ng religion. No, it's not. Religion and political views, they, it's hard to argue with that. Okay? Di sana kung kaya pala natin magkasundo, pare-pareho na lang tayo ng religion. But no, some even do not even, uh, some people even um, do not have religion. Okay? Because that's part of their decision. 
And as a teacher, we need to accept that each individual is actually um, a self-selecting organism. It centers on human values, interests, capacities, needs, worth, and dignity. Learning refers to the acquisition of new knowledge, behavior, skills, and values through process of study, practice, or experience. Um, it is uh, very evident during the Renaissance period or period of good work. Humanism played a major role in the education. The humanist proponents are practitioners of humanism during the Renaissance believe that human beings could be dramatically changed by education. Overall, humanist education was thought at the time to be an important factor in the preparation of life. Kanina progressivism, education is life itself. Humanism, preparation of life. Again, ha, nakita niyo may mga pagkakaiba yung mga philosophies natin. Even they're both student-centered. Humanist schools combine Christianity and classics to produce a model of education. Humanistic psychology is a perspective that emphasizes looking at the whole individual and stresses concepts such as free will, self-efficacy, and self-actualization. Rather than concentrating on dysfunction, humanistic psychology strives to help people fulfilling their potential and maximize their well-being. So, humanistic curriculum is based on the belief that education that's good for a person is also be best for well-being of the nation. So, here, the individual learner is not regarded as a passive or easily managed. Say, lahat ng bata, lahat ng tao, they have um, the ability to reason out. Um, humanism is also developed by educational philosophy um, by Rousseau and Pestalozzi, who emphasizes nature and the basic goodness of humans. Um, some principles are respect for life and human dignity. Ngayon, this is the reason why yung mga humanitarian, ay, they do not like extrajudicial killings. They do not like death penalty because they have a respect for life. I know some of you, eh ma'am, eh paano naman po yung mga, yung mga kriminal na pinatay ng mga, mga taong yun. Okay, so, but I think humanism as um, they respect for life as life itself. Parang ganun yun nga. So it's, it's really contradicting. Okay. So these principles are all fundamental aspects of, uh, of our common humanity. Okay. So the proponent, uh, George Gage Berliner, let's try four objectives. One, promote and develop positive self-direction and independence. Develop the ability to take responsibility of what learned. Develop, uh, promote and develop creativity and promote and develop curiosity. So that is humanism. Now let us have constructivism. Constructivism is based on the belief that learning occurs as learners actively involved in the process. Now, baka sabihin yung, ma'am, nakakalito po yung, ano, yung thinkers. Right? So sa so thinkers, magkaiba siya sa constructivism. Kasi yung perennialism, they will study the thinkers. But in constructivism, construct pala, constructivism, they believe that learning occurs are when they are actively involved in a process of meaning, of knowledge. So, ibig sabihin, sa constructivism, they will create their own knowledge. Yan, yan ang pinagkaibang yan. Constructivism is an approach to learning that holds that people actively construct or make their own knowledge and that reality is determined by the experience of the learner. So that is constructivism. Yan yung pinagkaiba niya. And as a teacher, what we need to do is to help the students. How can we help the students? We could help them by bringing their personal experience into the classroom. And this experience have a tremendous impact on the students' views of how the world works. Now, for you um, since wala tayong, um, we could have some activities, okay? So you could think of some activities in which you could bring your, um, your student to class, pwede. And basta as long as they would experience lots of things, it is, and then they will think about it, ayun, constructivism. Characteristics of constructivism, learner constructs understanding. New learning depends on current understanding, and learning is facilitated by social interaction, 
A meaningful learning occurs within authentic learning facts. So, for example, um, like, okay, class, we will make a cake. Okay. So, yun yun. They will construct your own knowledge. Ay, ganito pala gumawa ng cake. So, during your lecture discussion, you ask them, okay, so ganito ka, kabilis ang gagamitin natin para mag-rise yung egg whites. Okay, yung sinabi mo. But that's different if they themselves will be the one who will beat the egg. Okay, yun. And then you could say, uh, for example, uh, while waking a cake, okay, class, um, dapat malamig. Uh, so the batter, okay, for the batter should be cold, okay, it should be hot, either kung ano man yung tawag ko. So the students will now know how cold, how hot by the feeling mararamdaman nila. Okay, so you would know, the students will have an authentic Okay, so kasi ginagawa nila. And they themselves can construct their own knowledge based on that. There are two types of constructivism, two views of constructivism. One is the individual constructivism. This is also called cognitive constructivism. It emphasizes an individual and internal construction of knowledge. And it's based on Piaget's theory. Uh, this type of child-centered discovery, they believe that learners should be allowed to discover principles through their own exploration rather than direct instruction of the teacher. So, hindi naman hindi sabihin nito, ma'am, alam ko na gagawin ko sa mga bata, ililigaw ko, tapos bahala sila makauwi. <laughs> hindi naman siyempre ganon. But, you could, kagaya nung sabi nyo, um, di ba kanina, sabi nung isa sa inyo ay, may mga different tools na nakahain. So, for the individual constructivism, you could, Ask them to get. Okay, everybody, just get one. Okay. Ano ba? Pero matagal, ah, matagal to. Okay, so now, I want you to think. Since we have discussed this one, what do you think is the use of these tools? Okay, so pwede ganun. So they will construct their own knowledge for that. And then, we also have the social constructivism. This view emphasizes that knowledge exists in a social context it is initially shared with the others instead of being represented solely in the mind of an individual. Hence, construction of knowledge is shared by two or more people. According to social constructivists, the opportunity to interact and share among learners helps to shape and refine their ideas. Knowledge construct becomes social and not individual. So, pwede dito mag-grouping sila. Okay, so pwede yan. Those are the different things that you could do for the social constructivism. Labi na tayo matapos, nasa existentialism na tayo. Existentialism is you help the students to understand and appreciate themselves as unique individuals who accept complete responsibilities of thoughts or feelings and actions. Now, as a teacher, we need to help our students define their own essence by exposing them to various paths they take in life by creating an environment in which they freely choose their own preferred way. Ma'am, nakakalito. Ano pinagaya ba sa humanism? Okay, sige. Didefine natin. Learning in existentialism is self-paced and self-directed. And with this one, teachers should not be judgmental. Why? Because values are personal. Now, ma'am, ano yung sabihin? Now, some of you, um, okay. So, like, for example, let's have, um, sabi, lagi ko sinasabi, Okay, this one. Um, some of you will agree that it's okay to have a live-in, live-in muna, co-live-in co before marriage. And some of you will not. Okay? Because, um, sinasabi nila na co-live-in is not good kasi nga, um, you are living in sin. Yun na sinasabi ng mga tao, diba? But, to some people, it's fine. It's practical, especially if you're living outside the uh, city. And kasi uh, para kayong roommates, kasi ganun sa ibang bansa. Co-live-in is normal. Kasi they do not want to get married and later on get divorced because of the differences that they have. Each of you has different values. And until now, many people, many couples have this kind of... Um, 
in, in this kind of perspective now. Even artists do not, um, they do co-live okay, freely. Kasi they believe that it's better for them. Lalo ni mga vloggers natin ngayon. Marami sa kanila ang mga co-live in na. Kasi um, it's practical because they have business and whatsoever. Okay, so mas gusto nila yon. But to some people, it's still frowned upon. Now, as a teacher, as an existentialist teacher, you cannot be judgmental. You are not judgmental because you know that values are personal. Kasi kung tutusin, wala naman silang pinatay na tao. Wala silang sinasaktang tao. Yun nga lang, pagchichismis lang sila. But it's different. Okay? Now, as a teacher, aside from those kind of things, we could also ask the students, like, for example, in, a, in our lesson, Dr. Serge Sal is our national hero, instead of saying that, we could say, in what way do you think you and Dr. Jose Rizal say? So, pwedeng ganun. So, the proponent is John Paul Sartre, all the existentialists. Now, a while ago, uh, because you're not my students, di ko kayo sojante before, um, but I thought that I am a progressive teacher. But actually, I too, now, is a behaviorist din pala. I didn't know just that I'm making this PowerPoint presentation. Um, behaviorism is a modification and shaping of students' behavior by providing a favorable environment. The product, because it is believed that students are part of their environment. Behaviorist teachers teach students to respond favorably to vigorous stimuli in the environment. So, kasama na ang light, temperature, arrangement of furniture, and size, quantity of visual aids have to be controlled to get desired response. That is why, to some schools, lalo na yung mga they believe in behaviorist schools, ang classroom nila ay sobrang makulay. Mama, do you mean na ang daming these decorations all throughout the classroom, uh, they have, may iba nga sa ceiling meron, may mga ibang latay-latay. Because they want the students to be engaged actively. The, they do not uh, have the malamig na malamig na classroom. They have the normal temperature. Na hindi siya mainit, hindi siya malamig. Kasi pag masyado siyang malamig, the students will be sleepy and feel sick. Pag mainit siya, malinsangan. Na parang hindi magkakasakit. So kasama din yan. And aside from that, students are given in incentives. Ako ay give incentives. Like, for example, um, magkakaroon kayo ng quiz next week. And then, those students who will have the highest for this section will receive additional points sa midterm. And the students who will have the highest points pa versus the BTVTED, BSED 2A English, Filipino Math Science, and BPED, will receive another additional points sa kanilang midterm. So, as a behavior teacher, I really give pluses. I really give additional um, points. Okay, so the grading system. Lagi ako may additional points. Every time that I request something, I make sure that I give additional points. So, dun ko lang na-realize while I was making this one na I too pala is a behavior teacher. And last for our philosophy for today is a linguistic philosophy. Now, um, in the linguistic philosophy, it is believed to develop the communication skills of the learner because the ability to articulate, to voice out the meaning of values of things that one obtains from his or her experience of life, and the word is very essence of a man. So it is through his or her ability to express everything. Teachers develop the learning skills to send message clearly and receive message correctly. They teach students how to communicate, verbal, nonverbal, paraverbal, oral, or written. And they ask the students to speak more knowledge, as speak more languages as they can. Now, as a student, as a teacher rather, we know that the students are using their uh you call this students are actually need to be trained on how to respond and how to receive information like for example bakit kayo nag uh, bakit kayo galit kasi yung tono ng tono ng boss niya eh. but ganon so as a teacher we need to help the students to use proper tone 
facing and voice of the words of the word kasi magkakaroon ng problem and aside from the deliverance we also have how they receive the message baka kasi mamaya ang yabang nang dating nung ano na to eh pero hindi naman pala ikaw lang ang maiba okay so those are uh, the things that you will teach eh ngayon ang tanong how will you teach it so how will you teach the tone facing volume of the voice So, the teacher will have a constant receiving of different messages and dialogues. So, magkakaroon kayo ng conversation, ganun, to teach um, language uh, correctly, precisely, grammatically, correct, coherent, and accurate. So, yun yun. So, I think the proponent of this one is Jurgen Habermas and John Stuart Petham. Okay? So, let's have the lesson three before our last participation. Lesson three is dimension of learner-centered teaching. In a book written by Wayner 2002, she said that students, to be learner-centered, the instructional practice needs to change five things. The first one, the function of content in learner-centered teaching includes giving students a strong knowledge foundation, applying the content, and the ability to learn more independently. In the first part, we should know that the student, we should help the students to have more collaboration and more independent learning. So, ganun ang gagawin natin in a learner-centered teaching, that they need to change. The second one is the role of the instructor. The role of the instructor focuses on helping the students to learn. Since we would like them to learn independently, the role of the instructors is to help the students to learn how to do it independently. Okay, pa po yun sa reporting. Reporting kasi it's just one part. Reporting kasi ibibigay mo sa kanila yun eh. They will be the one who will help you. Pero unless, unless it's a modified reporting, like for example, The students will share. Ikaw talaga, ikaw pa din. But for example, may topic ka. Like for example, ang topic ko ngayon ay philosophy ko ay behaviorism. Tapos sabi ko, okay, um, pakireport naman ito, Asusena. That is your reporting for today. So, si Asusena, siya na yung nag-report lahat. Oh, so Asusena should only share some things. But the actual discussion should come kasi the problem with that is kung ang hirap sa part ng sudyante na to discuss that to you, ikaw yung ano eh, ikaw yung credible sources eh. Ikaw yung mas magaling. Ikaw yung mas may alam. So therefore, dapat kayo magagaling yung instruction. Baka kasi mali ko yung bata. Mali yung masabi. So tapos maglilet. Di ba? Maglilet kayo. So napakahirap. Number three, Responsibility for learning shifts from instructor to the students. Dati, si instructor, okay, kasi nga, ito magtuturo, turo, turo, turo. Ngayon, nasa studyante na. Kasi kailangan niya. Ayan, dyan pumapasok yung, ma'am, ano naman eh? Puro na lang tayo, ano lang, uh, requirements basis na lang. Kasi yun ang nga ngayon. Yun ang trend ngayon. Puro requirements. Kasi, the ability mo to do those kind of work. Number one, under pressure. But yet, it should be beautiful. Yeah. Next, number four. The purpose and process of assessment shifts from only assigning grades to include providing constructive feedback to assist the student improvement. Dati, bigay ka lang ng grade. But now, you give feedbacks to them. And how they will make it better. For example, ang pangit ng project mo, how will you make it better? Uh, anak, hindi mas... Di, syempre, sabi mo, anak, yung project mo, mas gaganda. Kung kunwari, ito, edikit mo dyan. Give specific feedback. At kung mo, wag mo sasabihin na, kayo tong bata, dapat kayo yung may alam dyan. Hindi ganun. Ikaw ang teacher, dapat ikaw may alam dyan. Diba? Dapat ganun. So, instead of saying that, but if, ha, um, kung may negative ka masasabi, like, ang pangit naman nun, how will you make it better? Give specific examples. Like, for example, anak, ah, hindi ah, medyo malung malungkot naman yung ano mo, yung project mo, yung cake mo. <laughs> Sorry kung puro ganun na. O kaya, sige, nagluto ka ng ng kare-kare. Ang tigas naman ng kare-kare na to. Parang ganun. Lahat na lang matigas, half-cook lahat, pati karne. Okay. So, ngayon, ang tatanong, next time, what, what the students could do? Okay, not next time before you pagsamasamahin yung mga pagkain. Dapat ganito muna, dapat ganyan. So, you need to give feedbacks. Kasi hindi pwede na nagsabi ka lang ng pangit. Bakit siya pangit? And paano siya gaganda? Okay? 
the balance of power shift uh, shift so that instructor share some decisions with the course with the students such that instructor and students collaborate through course policies and procedures. So meron na tayong collaboration. Now, let's have your activity for today. So chat box tayo ha. This time, sana naman may sasagot na. Okay? First to answer through chat will receive three points. First five will receive two points each. Okay? So I hope you're ready. This is your question number 11. This philosophy believes that learner is the product of his environment. Product of his environment. What is, what philosophy is this? The learner is product of his environment. Learner is product of his environment. Okay, let us check. Sila lang ang nagsagot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Okay. So the correct answer is behavior received. So, um, Leo Marie Ramos will receive 3 points and Kate will receive 2 points. Behavior received. Next, let's have question number 12. Communicating being person. This philosophy believes that um, the learners are communicating being person. What philosophy is that? Humanism, Jubel, check your spelling. Okay? The correct answer is linguistic philosophy. Okay, number 13. Yes or no? Constructivists agree that meaning can be imposed. Constructivists agree that meaning can be imposed. Yes or no? Meaning can be imposed. Okay. The correct answer is no. The meaning cannot be imposed. Kaya nga magkoconstruct ang bata. Okay. Next, number 13. Yes or no? Behaviorists are concerned with the modification of students' behavior. Yes or no? Yes or no? Let us check. The correct answer is yes. Okay, very good. Number 14. Yes or no, perennialist teacher sees wisdom of ancient medieval times. Ancient medieval times. The correct answer is yes. And last number for our discussion. Number 15. Yes or no, essentialist teachers frown on long academic and core requirements. Essentialist teachers frown on long academic calendar and long requirements. And very good. The correct answer is no. Gusto gusto nga nila yun. Okay, very good. So, I guess nakabawi naman kayo. Next week, we will have um, next week, we will have our quiz. Don't forget that. Okay, huwag nung kakalimutan na magkakaroon tayo ng quiz. So, this will be open for 24 hours. 
So, magsisimula yan ng 2 p.m. day, uh, next week ng Friday, and it will end ng 2 p.m. ng Saturday. So, I will open that 2 p.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, so yun lamang po. Before we proceed with our last activity for today, um, I would like you to turn on your cameras. Yes, Maritoni? Ma'am, ayun po sa sinabi niyo pong instruction, yung first three, ay ang first two makakagat ng three points at yung first, ay, ay, ay yung pangatlo po, yung susunod na tatlo ay makakagat ng two points. Paano po yung, susunod na lima? Yun, medyo naracha po tayo eh. Uh, lahat, yung bumaba po sa lima, tigwa one point po ba yan? Yung ah, pang-anim, pang-pito, pang-walo, yung mga oh, sumagot po na tama. Total, hindi naman kayo naka-point ng madami ngayon. Sige. Okay lang. Bigyan na natin po. ng point. Okay. okay. So, Sige. everyone, Sige. kindly Sige. open your cameras. So, we will have our picture taking. Uh, Miss Kaira. Ikaw na lang magbilang. Opo. <laughs> One. Ay, si Angelica pa po, wala pa po. Ayan. One, two, three. Okay. Um, so, for your last activity, I just want you to at least write one sentence reflection. What did you learn today? And don't tell me na wala kayong natutunan kasi ang gagal natin ng discuss. You did learn something, at least one. Okay? So goodbye everyone. Just type your reflection and you're good to go. Pwede na kayong mag sa ating Pero lang of course sa ating class manager. Okay? Bye-bye. See you. Thank you po, ma'am. Thank you po, ma'am. Mukhang may hindi nagta-type ng reflection nila. Lumabas na yung iba. Ayaw daw mag-ano, reflection?
Okay na, Maritoni? Maritoni? Yes po, ma'am. Okay na po. Thank you po. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you po.